So let's look at this solution. x equals a sine bt plus c. What does it look like? Well, let's see. Let's draw some axes here. We'll plot the x there, and we'll put time along here. And I'll start it out uh, something like that. And when you look at it, let's do a first. So when you put a in front of a sinusoidal like that, you know that's the amplitude of a sinusoidal function. So a is the amplitude. C is called the phase lag. It has to do with where the sinusoid sits relative to the origin. Right? So this, if this is the origin of time, this is 0. And the sine of 0 is 0. So really, a sinusoid should have 0 value there. But I gave it a value. The 0 is back here. Right? And that's because we have an offset here in the, the part with the time in it. So really, this is C. It's called the phase lag. And it's usually written as phi. And then finally, the other property of a sinusoid we care about is the period. The total time for one cycle, like you could have defined it as between these two troughs. It's usually, we call it t. Big T is the period. And in this case, the way we've defined things, it's equal to 2 pi over b. So it's related to the frequency of the sinusoid. And in fact, the way sinusoids are usually described, the place where we put b is called the angular frequency omega. Okay? So we actually have a fairly uh, normal sinusoid. So this is usually written for an oscillator that x equals a sine, and then we call that omega naught t plus phi, where omega naught is the natural frequency. That's the thing that the equation of motion told us b has to be, square root of k over m. And amplitude and phase, a phi, can take any value. That's the other thing the equation of motion told us, is that they take any value you want. So let's see if this is true. So let's go back to our mass on our spring, and now see if we displace from the point of stable equilibrium, what happens? And sure enough, it moves like a sinusoid. It is a simple harmonic oscillator. So this part is correct. It does move like this. Let's see if omega naught is really set by the properties of the system. So it's saying that it'll always oscillate at the same frequency, square root of k over m. So let's see. Let's just watch a few. So that's sort of the frequency. You can get that in your head. And now I will give it a bigger amplitude. So you can kind of see it's about the same frequency. And now I'll give it a smaller amplitude. And now I'll give it a really small amplitude. So you can see I don't have a lot of rhythm. I'm doing my best. But you can see that the omega naught, the natural frequency, really is roughly constant, no matter what conditions we give it. Now let's see a and phi take any value. Can the amplitude take any value? Yes, it can have a big amplitude, or it can have a small amplitude, as we just showed. And it's still going to follow a sinusoid. Finally, can phi, can the, phase off, can the phase lag take any value? And the answer is yes, because I can make any time I want zero. In this uh, demonstration, I am God. I can say zero is now, or zero is now, or zero is now. Right? So, Indeed, the amplitude and the phase are free to take any value, and omega naught is set by the properties of the system. Now let's see how we would use this in a real problem. <laughs>